Hi, we are here with uh, Brother James Cox. Um, we are here at Artistic Adventures, and uh, he is one of our artists that we are featuring this month. Uh, hi, James. How are you? Wonderful. All right. And so how tell are us. You? I'm doing great. So tell us a little bit about uh, your company, Second Life Creations. Second Life Creations is a a company that builds, crafts, enhances seashells mm -hmm. and turns them into artwork, such as necklaces, some types of um, wall hangings, pieces that you sit on your table, and I just use the, the shells as my base to pretty much build artwork. They're beautiful. Uh, you have some very lovely pieces, and uh, they'll see that uh, a little bit later in the interview. So what it, what has inspired you uh, with your company and your business? Uh -huh. What inspired me to start this? Mm -hmm. I needed something at a certain point in my life to give me more meaning. I already had great meaning, mm -hmm. but I needed something to motivate me, and I decided to start walking a lot on the beach to get my body stronger and to be out in the air and mm -hmm. to pretty much uh, commune with nature and I decided that as I was picking up these shells that I wanted to do that and it came to me that this is what I could do. Uh -huh. And from that point on it launched this business. And I love your pieces, they're very unique. I like um, how you're explaining um, how each shell has significance, like with the the organic um, imperfections. Um, tell us a little bit about that. How each uh, imperfection makes a unique piece. When you pick up a shell, sometimes they're perfect as far as I can see, but there are a lot of the shells that are visibly cracked or what we consider to be uh, imperfections and flaws. I mm -hmm. see them as a, a fingerprint as a character enhancement. So I take these breaks or these flaws that most people see as flaws mm -hmm. and I engrandize them, put something in them, like a crystal or a jewel or paint something in them. Or I will put something in that particular flaw or crack and then at other times I leave the crack just the way it is and I paint over it and it adds personality and character to the show. Very neat. Now, I, I think you were um, explaining to me how they do that in China with some of the pieces. It's actually become a practice. Yes, in uh, China, they feel in, in the Orient, when mm -hmm. something is cracked, what they do is they aggrandize that thing. In other mm -hmm. words, add gold into it. It mm -hmm. says that it adds character and meaning and shows strength to that particular piece where most people will get rid of a piece that's cracked. Mm -hmm. The Orientals put something in it like gold or silver or jewels make it better. I think it's beautiful. I, I think that's an awesome idea. Okay, now I have a couple questions um, that I ask uh, most of my clients. Um, what do you feel are some of the pros and cons of your business? Um, as far as uh, the time that you spend and the investment in your business? The pros and cons. Mm -hmm. I don't see any cons. Uh -huh. Everything is a pro. All right, I like that. So positive. The positive time it thinking. takes me to do one piece, uh -huh. if I don't get, put myself into that piece and do it the way I feel, then I don't feel good about it once it's finished. So, as far as why it's important to spend that time, is that when I'm done with it, no matter what I put as a, a price, it doesn't have any meaning to me as far as what I get for it if I know that I didn't do the best job mm -hmm. and spend the amount of time on it that I need to spend to make it the way I want it. Nice, nice. Now, some artists uh, fall into that trap where they have uh, the writer's block or artist's block or whatever. Have you ever come to a point uh, in creating that you, like that energy's been stifled or something has uh, held you back from wanting to create? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> all the time. I, I so what drives you or motivates you to keep? <laughs> I let things, uh -huh. people, places, and things 
everyday life, huh? Everyday life <laughs> caused me to have to step back because mm -hmm. when my energy isn't into what I'm doing, mm -hmm. that piece is not going to give me what I want, and the people are not going to see it. Mm -hmm. So I have to really step back, uh, deal with whatever issue is that had, and then come back to it if I want to produce something that's going to be the way I want it and the way I feel the public wants to see it. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay, now how often do you create? Do you create like once a week, once a month? Um, is it uh, just a natural flow for you? Well, it, it, every day. Mm -hmm. I think about oh, painting great. or fixing or uh -huh. crafting every day. But to sit down and actually work on a piece, mm -hmm. I try to do that every day. I have three projects going on all the time pieces I'm working on all the time because my ideas will flow from one to the other and while one is being prepared at one stage the next one is the next stage so I always have something flowing mm -hmm. so every day I try to work on something if not anything else drawing sketching uh -huh. on a piece or on paper so okay. every day it comes to mind I will do something every day right now, how do you get the word out on what you do? Um, do you have a website, um, business cards? Do you do conventions? How, how do you um, deliver to your audience? Yes. Mm -hmm. All of the above. All of the above. That's yeah, I'm awesome. I'm working on uh -huh. all of them. So it's okay. word of mouth. It's building a website uh -huh. that we're working on. It's uh, cards. It's brochures. It's shows. Right. And right. like take to get it, I would. Uh -huh. Okay. Now what do you feel is your tar target audience? Um, is it women? Um, is it middle-aged women? Um, wh whom do you feel is your base as to who buys your product? Yes. Everybody. Everybody. Oh. Men will buy for uh -huh. their women. Mm -hmm. Women will buy for themselves. Okay. Women will buy for their children, uh -huh. brothers, sisters. Everybody. Nice. So you clean up at Mother's Day, huh? Mother's Day, Father's Day. I have pieces for me too. So there's no, uh -huh. there's nothing out there that I want my market to. Uh huh. And everybody, at one time or another, will see something that they want to get to somebody else. Uh huh. Okay. Now here's a question that I post to some of my clients too. Are you mindful of uh, what people like the feedback that you get on your product? Um, uh, as far as the customers that you sell to? Yes, I pay particular attention to what people say. Mm -hmm. I don't take it to heart, mm -hmm. but I listen to them. And people will give you an idea of what they like and don't like, but that doesn't mean everybody's going right. like to don't like what they So I just, just, I just take all of that in, uh -huh. use it as motivation, not as a distraction, mm -hmm. so that I know that certain people like certain things and certain people don't. So when somebody criticizes my piece or my work or says it's too large or too small or not this color, I just take it as a reason to say, all right, I will build more pieces, different styles for everybody. Mm -hmm. So I use it as motivation as opposed to as a distraction. Great. We are educating artists about copyrights and patents and recording uh, their wills so that they are um, so that their work is inherited uh, or preserved with their family or friends um, or entrusted in a curator uh, to handle their estate. Have you uh, made the provisions to uh, have your work um, listed in a will or Not patents yet, but or copyright? I am working on that. That is very important. Mm -hmm. It's copyrights. Yes, yeah, very important for an artist. It's a business as well as mm -hmm. a lifestyle. So if you don't protect your business, somebody else will infringe on your rights. So right. it's important to do that and to make sure you leave a legacy to somebody. Uh -huh. So that's important that I go in that direction and I am looking into that. That's, uh -huh. that's very important. That's great. Now I like uh, what you've done with your website. You have a registry. So like when someone purchases uh, one of your pieces, which they're one of a kind, um, that they actually go to your website and register it that way. That's another form of copyright as well as uh, authentic you know, authentic authentication, sorry, on your pieces. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, every one of my pieces is unique. There will never be two of that kind. It's like fingerprints. Mm -hmm. Fingerprints, meaning that if you don't look closely, you can't tell the difference. But with mine, 
I don't get that close. Mm -hmm. If there are two pieces that look alike, there will always be a distinction between one of the two pieces. Right. So on my website, where somebody wants to buy a piece and it's sold, and they ask me to reproduce that piece, mm -hmm. I won't do that because every piece is authentic. And that's how you keep it unique. Religion. Uh huh. And I know how I change it, so uh, they will never be two of the same kind. Uh -huh. Okay, great. Um, so how do you want to be remembered as an artist? A lot of, a lot of artists uh, have some very interesting uh, responses to that, that question. How do I want to be remembered? I haven't really thought that out yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I said, that's I, a tough one. That's a tough one. <laughs> it's easier for me to just say that I'm coming to a point where I've got to decide that. But mm -hmm. if you're going to ask me to tell you that now, what I would want to say is that my work was authentic, mm -hmm. it was original, it was from my dedication and from me. That's where I want to be. Right. Now, have you had any major sacrifices or uh, any setbacks in order to uh, pursue your dream? Not really, except for mm -hmm. my health. I mean, I haven't felt good in a while. Uh, and the only thing that stops me from pursuing this is mm -hmm. being uh, energetic and having the right uh, feeling in my body to, to spend the time to do it. So, there's not been any setbacks other than my health, because uh, I mentally want to do it. Sometimes mental, uh, mental uh, desire push. is <laughs> yeah. more stronger than, than anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, do you have uh, a couple last questions? Uh, do you have someone that uh, influences you, or a mentor, or someone that inspires you to uh, do your work, or does that come from your own internal? I think. My inspiration comes from my connection with God and nature. Amen. Uh, and that it branches out to everybody. Mm -hmm. I see people the way they look, the way they act, the way they dress. Mm -hmm. But I always look inside. And nature, I'm a nature person. Mm -hmm. Outdoors, trees, water, flowers, animals, people, every kind of shape, size, color, culture. So I just use all that to help me to to bring forth a creation. Uh -huh. So it's everything, especially, you know, it all comes from God. Water, trees. Oh, I love trees. that. Now, speaking of nature, I know you're also a photographer, so that helps to um, sort of somewhat of an influence, like you said, the nature um, as to how you put your pieces together. Could you tell us a little bit about the trips that you take uh, with your photography group? Photography is, I think, the base for me to help remember. Uh, I've got a lot of, I'm a landscape photographer, mm -hmm. mainly. I don't like to do people. I have done people. Mm -hmm. But I'm a water, mountain, trees, uh, any type of nature, birds, whatever. And all of those have color. Mm -hmm. And when you think about how the flow of nature works, it's easy to take that inspiration from that to bring it to a, a seashell that was lying dormant in the bottom of the ocean. Bring it out and know that it has a second life now based on my photography. So I do travel as much as I can, as much as I can afford to travel in these different places. And it just inspires me to be more forward thinking when it comes to how I create these pieces from my photography. I can go to a picture of the landscape mm -hmm. and the next thing you know I'm painting a palm tree Right, and it really complements the work. You can you can and, tell. And the photography, uh -huh. I always use it as a base. One right. Of the basis that mm -hmm. I use as far as color and scene. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell us a little bit about the uh, trips that you take uh, to Hawaii with the group uh, that you, you shoot the photography. We have a, just a small group of photographers who once a year go. Uh -huh. And we hike and we take pictures and we pretty much do a landscape type of uh, what I consider to be a, a traveling expedition. I'm trying to find Sounds flowers, really interesting. Uh -huh. flowers in the mountains and the and water and the trees and the trails. Mm -hmm. And we find every type of landscape, bird, whatever, that's in that particular region. And we just photograph it. Wow. And the inspiration from just the hikes alone. Wow. And when you look at uh, Brother Cox's website, you'll actually see some of the beautiful uh, landscapes that he's speaking of uh, from Hawaii and abroad um, that really complement the beautiful uh, shell pieces 
uh, that he's put together. They're awesome. Well, we want to thank you for taking this time with us, for uh, joining us here at Artistic Adventures. And Brother Cox, before we end, could you tell, give us your contact information as to your web address? Web address Info. is Second Life Creations, A-P-S dot com. Okay. And APH, I'm sorry, APH. APH, uh -huh. APH is Atlantic Pacific Hawaii. Second right. Life uh -huh. Creations, APH dot com. All right. Second Life Creations, APH dot com. And once again, we thank you for joining us here at Artistic Adventures. And thank you for your time. Thank you.